welcome to Faith at Work, the preaching and teaching ministry of W. Carey Hedgepath. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And now, Faith at Work. Hello, I'm Carey Hedgepath, and I want to welcome you to Faith at Work ministry. This ministry is being brought to you by my friends and my partners who love the Lord and trust me and want to be a part of this ministry. And so I just thank the Lord for them and I thank you that you're watching today and I pray that God will bless your heart and that he'll speak to you in a very special way. The title of the lesson today is Don't Ever Stop Preaching. Don't Ever Stop Preaching. And my scripture today is from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, and 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. These scriptures, honestly, are just as up-to-date and just as current. And of course, really, all of scripture is just up-to-date and very current. But, uh, and, and especially, well, not especially, but even the scripture that I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 7, the words of Jesus in verse 6, and we'll get to that in just a moment. So listen carefully as I read from God's work, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Paul is writing to Timothy. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, and having the appearance of godliness but denying the power, avoid such people. Verse 5 says in one translation, and from such people turn away. Don't have anything to do with them. Avoid such people. Now from chapter 4, beginning with verse 1, Paul continues, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound doctrine or teaching, but have itchy ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry." I want to go back just a moment to that verse that I just spoke on or I just read in verse 4 and verse 5 of chapter 3. Paul lists all the evils, all the wickedness and all the attitudes and the mindset and the lostness of people. And he says from such people, now he's talking to Timothy who is a preacher he says, from, some, from, from such people, turn away. Don't have anything to do with them. Avoid these kinds of people. Well, I, I, I can't help but ask the question, when he says that, does he mean uh, don't go near them? Or does it mean just let them go? You know, in the Old Testament, God spoke to the prophet, and he says, Ephraim has joined themselves to idols, leave them alone. You know, in, Je- in, uh, in Matthew chapter 7, which is a part of the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord Jesus himself said, Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine. 
dogs and swine represented unholy and ungodly and wicked people. So here's what Jesus is saying. Do not give what is holy. This is holy. Do not give what is holy to the ungodly or to the unholy. And do not cast your pearls. This, this is pearls. Do not cast your pearls before swine, before wicked people. Because here's what they'll do. They'll trample it under their feet. And then they'll go looking for you and they'll tear you to pieces. <laughs> Woof. Let me tell you something, folks. Today, now, I said a moment ago, this is this, this scripture that was written 2,000 years ago. It was spoken by the Apostle Paul and spoken by the Lord Jesus. Is just as current and up to date and appropriate and applicable today as it was in those days. Today, we have the atheist, we have the abortionist. We have those who are determined to make it a law to have same-sex marriage, a man and a man and a woman and a woman. We have fornicators. We have adulterers. And the reason I'm adding all these is because, of course, they're all in here. But sometimes when you talk to people about their particular sin, they say, well, what about so-and-so? Well, I'm trying to list as many as I can think of. So we have the atheists and the abortionists and the same-sex marriages and the fornicators and the adulterers and the alcoholics, the drunkards. We have liars and false teachers. America is filled with false teachers. The world is filled with false teachers. We have thieves. We have rich men full of knowledge. And we have poor men full of themselves in other words, we have unbelievers, ungodly, unholy, wicked people today, just as they had in the days of Jesus, in the days of Paul. It has always been that way. And it will always be that way until Jesus comes. And we have the, in addition to all of this, we have the hypocrite, the person who acts like an actor. They they pretend to be something that they're not. We have the hypocrites who give the appearance of godliness, godliness, but they don't really know God. John the Baptist called them, you brood of vipers. Jesus just simply called them hypocrites. Some of these people, perhaps many, are in our congregations today. They reject the gospel of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. They love, they don't mind hearing about Jesus. They don't mind hearing a good message or a good sermon on how to improve and how to be better and how we ought to act and things like that. But they detest, they reject the gospel of the Lordship, the rule of Jesus Christ in their lives. They reject the message and they reject the messenger. They will falsely, listen, believe me, there's some preachers listening to me and there's some mamas and daddies and grandparents listening to me and others. And you know this. This is a fact. This will get an amen. These kinds of people will falsely accuse you of lying when you try to share the gospel with them, when you lovingly, lovingly try to preach or teach or witness or pray with them, they will accuse you of lying and of being judgmental, of being phobic, and of being fanatical. And as Jesus said, they will tear you to pieces. They'll break your heart. They'll disappoint you. And they'll hurt you. 
And we all know this to be true. Those of us that have preached and have taught and are teaching and are witnessing and are sharing and are praying and are having to deal with these kinds of issues and these kinds of people. They're in our churches. They're in our homes. They're in the, they're in the marketplace where we work and where we make a living. William McDonald, one of the great theologians of last century, uh, in his commentary on the Bible, this is what he had to say about these scriptures. He says, when we meet vicious people who treat divine doctrine with utter contempt and respond to our preaching with abuse and violence, We're not obligated to continue to share the gospel with them. He's getting that from where Paul said, avoid them, stay away from them. And where Jesus said, do not cast your pearls before swine. Do not give what is holy to the dogs. They'll they'll trample it and they'll come and tear you to pieces and McDonald says, when we meet vicious people who treat divine doctrine with utter contempt and respond to our preaching with abuse and violence, we're not obligated, he says, we're not obligated to continue to share the gospel with them. And, and I understand that. There's, uh, th- th- that's a truth. There's no question about it. I understand what Jesus said. I understand what Paul said. But, but you just can't help but to go back to what Jesus also said. In Matthew chapter 5, listen to the words of Jesus, where he says in verse 44, But I say to you, love your enemies. And pray for those who persecute you. So that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and the unjust. Jesus says, love your enemies. Those who persecute you. Those who reject you. And Jesus reminds us, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. (laughs) And you're a, you're a son of God. You're a child of God. You're my, you're my brother. And if you're my brother and if you use my name and you teach what my father has written and what I have written, not only in my own words but through the words and the mouths and the minds of other men such as Paul and the great prophets and other apostles, he said they're going to hate you. They're going to reject you. But you just go ahead and love them. And the Apostle Paul says, and what we read, what we read from just a few moments ago, he says to them, he says, he says, endure affliction. Endure affliction. Take it on the chin. And just keep on keeping on. Keep on preaching. Don't stop preaching. The connection here is that we're to stand and we're to preach. And 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 to leave the results up to God. And no matter what it costs us, no matter how much it hurts, no matter how much we're rejected, and no matter what we're called, fanatical, phobic, Liars, whatever it is, we're to continue to keep on doing and speaking and preaching and teaching the Word of God. I'll have to ask a question here. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to be honest with you. I, I want to. I'm speaking from my heart. I'm not hollering and screaming. I'm not throwing a fit. I just speak to you from my heart. <laughs> And I suppose some of you have this same question. And here it is. Sometimes, many times in fact, 
I asked the question, is anyone listening to me? <laughs> is, is anyone listening to this gospel that I'm preaching? Well, there's an answer for that. And here it is. From God, yes. <laughs> yes. There's plenty of people listening. Plenty of people. Thousands of people are listening. There may be a million that won't listen, that would less love to tear us to pieces. But there may be a thousand that is listening. Now here's the lesson for me. And here's the lesson for you today. This is, I'm talking to my brothers and my sisters in Christ. We're to continue to preach the word. We're continue, we will continue, we must continue to not only preach the word, but teach the word. You don't have to be a preacher. This, this is not just applicable, obviously, of course not, to just preachers. It's applicable to teachers. It's applicable to anyone and to everyone who shares the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of God with other people. So we're to continue to preach the word. We're to, we're to teach the word. Every time we have an opportunity. Are you listening? Don't be discouraged. Don't throw your hands up. Don't, don't have a pity party. Don't be like me sometime. I'm putting myself right in the middle of this because I need this as much as anybody. Don't have a pity party. You just get up there and you preach and you teach and you share and you pray. Every opportunity that you have. Remember, Paul said it. Jesus said it. They all said it. We've said it and we know it to be true. We are living in the last days. Time is running out. Don't dare say, well, that's not my problem. Well, no, it's not our problem. God's in charge of time. But it is our problem. It is our responsibility. It, 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 is, it is our privilege and joy and accountability to be faithful to the very end, no matter what the cost, no matter how much the rejection and on and on we go. I won't continue to repeat myself. Preach the word. Teach the word every time you have an opportunity. And here's why. Here's the encouraging word. Listen to this. Because you just never know who is listening. You never know who's listening. You never know when God, by His Holy Spirit through the sharing of the word, you just never know when God is going to move on somebody's soul, somebody's heart, and somebody's mind. He's going to open their eyes. He's going to open their ears. That's what happened to me. And that's what happened to you. And as I said, I, I, remember, I remember so well in 1973 at age 35, when I got saved, I did not go to church to get saved. I went to church because that's what we do. And that man stood and he preached. Honestly, I don't think he said anything I never heard before. He said it his way. He said it right out of the scripture. And God used that to convict me of my sin and my need to repent and to surrender my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, where did I fit in? Was I an atheist or all, was I any of those things? No. I was that hypocrite. A lost church member. A lost Sunday school teacher. But that man just kept on preaching. And God kept on speaking to my heart. From the time I was a little boy being raised in the church, all during my teenage years and all during my 
very early years in college and in the military. And then when I got married and when I became a daddy. But it was at age 35 at a Sunday school conference that God broke through the teaching and the preaching and all that had been said and done through wonderful, wonderful, wonderful parents and godly Sunday school teachers and faithful preachers, and the word broke through. Number two, preach hard. Share hard. Love hard. Pray hard. But be kind. We don't have to be mean about it. We don't have to be ugly about it. We, we, listen, we don't, it's not our responsibility to get somebody straightened out. We can't get anybody straightened out. Nobody can straighten me out except the Holy Spirit of God. So, so just give them everything you've got and be nice about it. Do it with love. This is what Paul is saying. Do it with love and do it with endurance. Do it with compassion. And do it, do it with patience. I was about to say do it with the patience of a mother or a grandmother. But that can, say, that can be said of a father or a grandfather. <laughs> or it can be said about of a brother or a sister. Just continue to teach and preach and share and, and do it in such a way that there's a sweetness about you, there's a kindness about you. And you do it with love and compassion and with patience. Well, isn't that what Jesus did? And isn't that what the Apostle Paul did? And that's exactly what he's telling Timothy to do. Do it with patience. And why is that? Why? Because we know. I know this. I, it took a while for God to teach it to me. But I know this to be true. God will send. Listen to me. God will send the right person, the right sinner, at the right time to hear what you have to say. He knows every heart. And he knows those Whom he loves. Listen, let me say that again. God knows every heart. And he knows those whom he loves. And he'll send them at the right time to hear you and to hear me. And they will come under conviction of sin by the Holy Spirit. He'll call them. God will call them. And they will come to Jesus. Listen, let me say that again. God will call them and they will come to Jesus. And what will he do? He'll save them. <laughs> and he'll change their life. Now, that's scriptural. Jesus himself said, all that my father give me will come to me and I will not cast them out. I will give them eternal life. And in John Chapter 6, verse 44, he says, No one can come to me unless the Father draws them to me. So so God knows who they are. God, he's not on our clock. We're on his. And we're to serve him and to do what he's called us to do. And we're to do it with love and with passion and with compassion and with patience and leave the results up to God. God will save whom he chooses to save. We don't need to be afraid. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You know that scripture. But, but the reason I'm quoting it is that atheist, that agnostic, that alcoholic, that uh, homosexual, uh, you know, all of them, that hypocrite, all of them. God has the power to save them and to absolutely transform their lives. 
there is no sin, no sin that is too powerful for, for God not to save, for Jesus not to be able to save. That's good news to me. Where do, we, where do we continue to preach and teach? Well, listen, we do it in the pulpit. We do it on the radio. We do it in, on television. We do it in a football stadium. We do it at your house. You do it at your house. You do it over the telephone. And you do it over coffee. You're not to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And you're not to be afraid. And you're not to be mean. Nothing. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Let me remind you of something. You know, Nathan, the prophet, he went to his friend David, who was the king, and he, fa- he, he confronted him face to face, and he did it very lovingly, and he told a story. I don't have time to go there now. And, and, and he got the response from David he was looking for. God was working on David's life. David was covered in guilt. And, and, and Nathan said to him, David, thou art the one. This whole thing is about your sin. And it broke David's heart. So we have Nathan going to his friend in private. We have a stranger coming to Jesus in private. And what did Jesus say to him? He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be born from above. You must be born of the water and of the spirit. He just kept telling him the same thing over and over. And we we believe, we understand, it's, it's very apparent to us that Nicodemus came to know Christ. They came to John in the desert, and they came to Jesus by the sea. They come. They came to Paul in the prison. Folks, I'm trying to say to you, just be faithful and to keep on preaching and to keep on teaching and keep on supporting those who do that. Pray for them. We're praying for you. And we commit all these things to the Lord Jesus Christ. He will save those whom he chose. I love you, and I will be praying for you. My son, by the way, will be preaching for the next five weeks. You'll enjoy Bill Hedgepath. See you. We thank you for being with us today. We trust this message has been a blessing and a challenge in your life. If we can minister to you in prayer, or if you would like to partner financially with Faith at Work to help us spread the gospel message, please contact us at the address on your screen. And we invite you to join us again next week at this same time. Until then, may God bless you and may Christ Jesus be your Lord.